We're starting back up with the next section of symmetry elements. Last time we were talking about glide planes, reflections, and rotations. Today we finish off these symmetry elements with the last two, which are inversions and roto inversions. So in the textbook, we're continuing on. So let's see, we're actually going to be going over pages 118 to 120 today. And here we go. Let's start off with a little bit of inversions. This is a very common symmetry element, but not one that is particularly powerful, in my opinion. The symbology for when you see an inversion is to say I, a little I, and when we see them, in, it seems like almost every single crystal. And in fact, let's, um, let's define it here. The wording's a little weird. You, you'll understand better once we put a picture down. But so what we do is, with an inversion, we end up seeing the inverted object object is present on the opposite side connected by a line through the center. In fact, I'm not even going to finish writing that uh, definition until after I've drawn this for you. Let's say this is what we're talking about. We have a comma sitting on the top of a crystal. And what the, what the inversion is, is if you do a 360 spin around the crystal, and then project through the center of symmetry, the, the, the center of the crystal, then you will see a mirrored object on the other side. Okay, there's a 360 rotation involved. Maybe it seems obvious, I don't know. But what we have is an inverted object is present on the opposite side, connected by a line through the center. By a line through the crystal center. Okay, there's our quick sketch, okay, where we have done the steps to do it. We take a full 360, all right, that was step one. Then step two, we project through the center. And then we find it basically on the opposite side. Okay, this is a very common um, symmetry element to see, uh, or to find in minerals. Let's just show the example. It's basically this exact example here that I've drawn that is provided in the text. Let's just track through it. Here I'll go in blue. So here's our comma on the top. Now here at least we have it in three, di three dimensions. So what do we do? We go 360 around, project down through, and there it is. We find it on the opposite side. Now, the textbook here calls it a roto inversion. That's totally fair. It is a roto inversion. It's an inversion, and it's also called a center of symmetry. All of those are synonyms for one another. Now, notice this drawing right here. This drawing from the textbook is kind of what I did right here, where we're projecting in two dimensions what we can see in three. We're going to end up doing that a lot because it's harder to draw in three dimensions than it is in two. Now, before we move on to the next, let's just do this with a real crystal. Let's try this. This is a beautiful emerald crystal. Let's see if we can make this work. Here we go. There's our point. We are going to rotate around 360 degrees, fire through the crystal, and boom, we find it on the other side. So one of the corners of this hexagonal prism, there it is. And we could have done that for any point. This just is one that we see here. So we would say that this crystal has an inversion point, a center of symmetry. Now really, we mostly talk about the inversion to bring us to the final and by far the trickiest and most complicated symmetry element for the rookie to understand. And it is called the roto inversion. Just from the name alone, you can probably guess what we're going to talk about here. It's going to be a rotation plus an inversion. And as we go through this, I don't want you just to nod your head at the computer screen. This takes time and practice to understand. So to make a roto inversion, there are two steps. The first step is a rotation. Rotation with an twofold, threefold, 
fourfold or oops sixfold um, axis that's the first step to do and then the second step so then we'll say then invert through center of symmetry through that center of the crystal like we just were doing all right so through center of symmetry come on stop glitching out here all right there it is invert through center of symmetry now the symbology we have for roto inversions let's say that symbol is a number with a line over the top and so this symbology right here we would say out loud as a bar two which means that there is an a2 with an inversion okay and we can have more of these there are also so we have um, bar twos bar threes bar fours and bar sixes except for actually we never use the bar two because a bar two is just a mirror plane we never use bar sixes because this is just an a3 plus a mirror plane so even though I'm telling you this is really a complicated thing, there's only two roto inversions you need to learn, and one of them is the bar 3, and one of them is the bar 4. So what does this actually look like? Let's draw one first, and then we'll go see the same example in the text. Um, and with these drawings, I'm going to try to do my best to draw them cleanly and carefully for you. I'm going to draw three x's, an x, a y, and a z axis to try to represent something in three dimensions. So here we go, there's the, the um, x, and then this is coming out towards you in the third dimension. Okay, so we're trying to look in 3D, and we're going to do the example is a bar 2. Now I already told you we don't do bar 2s because of their mirrors, but it's the simplest type, and so we're just going to use it for teaching purposes. And here we are with a comma. How do we do the roto inversion? Well, step one is we rotate through with an A2, which is 180 degrees, and that gives us our comma sitting here. Then the next step is to invert through the center of symmetry right here, creating for us a comma that sits there. Now, if we were to look at that, notice that here it is. Here it is. If we were to draw a mirror plane right through here, we'd say, oh yeah, there's just a mirror plane, and that's why a bar 2 is a mirror. So that's a very simple example. But the but the 3s and 4s are harder. And we're actually just going to take our time and do those together. So here's an image from the textbook that shows how to walk through a bar 3 roto inversion. I'll work here in blue. Now we start at A. Okay, and this is a this is our example, which is a bar three. A bar three means it's going to have an A three, and an A three has a one hundred and twenty degree rotation. And we see all this marking here, right? The threefold, the one hundred and twenty. But it's okay to say things twice. So what we're going to do is we need to go from A to B, B to C. All right. So this is our goal. Our goal is to go from A to B. B to C to D to E and then F in the logical and correct sequence that the roto inversion allows. So with A, we're going to rotate 120 degrees, project down through the crystal, and look at that, there's B. Next, where's C? Well, C, we're going to find C by going 120 degrees clockwise, you see that? And then we go through the crystal. And there's C. Now I'm switching to red to find D. So C, to find D, we go 120 degrees. We invert down through the crystal. And there we are with D. E, 120 degrees through the crystal. Boom. There's E. And then lastly, we can do it again. You get the idea, right? 120 degrees down to F. Go back and watch the video over again or on slow motion. Okay, so we can do the same. So here is the um, two-dimensional representation of a 3D process. It gets a little harder to see, but let's just, um, let's try it. So A, rotate 120 degrees to E, shoot through the center of symmetry, and there we are at B. 
To find C, we go from B where we were, 120 degrees, and shoot to C. Now, how does this actually work in practice with a crystal? Well, let's try to do it. And we're going to do that by drawing a cube. Take your time, draw a really nice sharp cube, three dimensions. And when we draw a cube like this, we can start to look for our symmetry elements. And when we look for them, we're going to put an axis here, we're going to put an axis of rotation here, we'll put an axis of rotation there. Except for this axis, what is it? That's an A4. And if we rotate this one in the, around like this, that's also an A4. And if we rotate this one, it's also an A4. So a cube has three A4s. And what about mirrors? Oh, well, sure, there's going to be a ton of mirrors in a cube. All right, there's one example, and here's another example. There's many mirrors in a cube. But this lesson is about roto inversions, and, and your eye probably doesn't see one, obviously. And the reason for that is it's not oriented the correct way. So this is a little harder to draw, so I'm just going to pull in an image. And if you'd like to, pause this right now and draw this wireframe version of a cube. But if we draw the cube like this and we have our axis come out of this corner, then what we have is face A. And where is face B? Well, face B we can, be, we can find through a roto inversion, where we go around 120 degrees to this face right here, and then project through the center of symmetry, and that helps us find this face right here, which is B. Where's C? Well, we go 120 degrees to here, to this face. We project through the center of the crystal, and then so this face that's here on the back side of the crystal is C. Do you get the idea? Try to find where D is now. Rotate through, project down, D's down here. Okay, so what we end up finding is that there is a bar 3 through this corner, there's a bar 3 through this corner, a bar 3 through each of the corners, and a cube has four bar 3s. That takes a while for students to start to recognize. Now let's just practice with one more type of roto inversion before this lesson's over. This is going to be our working example of the bar 4. Okay, so with the bar four, we do 90 degree rotations. So here, let's just do an example. Here we are at A, we rotate 90 degrees, project down through, and here we are at B. We reject 90, yeah, uh-huh, and then we go, did I do that right? Uh-huh, maybe I did. Anyways, I think you get the idea that we do, let's just try it over here now. 90, project down through. Good. Now we get to B. Good. So we got to get to C this time. So we go here. Ah, oh, there was my mistake. And then we go to C. We go 90 and then down to D. That's how the roto inversion works on a simple textbook example. What about on like a real crystal? Let's try it here. So here is our face A. I say there might be a roto inversion through this axis. So if that's true, then we're going to rotate 90 degrees and flip and project. And so notice here, the triangle is pointing down. And on the face B that we've just gone to, the triangle is facing up, right? That's because we are inverting. So it does work. Practice with this a little bit, and we'll get some more practice in lab.